Okay, let me just share, uh, start uh, right away, share my screen. I hope it is visible for everyone. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. So this is uh, as part of seven days national level virtual FDP on teaching, learning and research. The topic which is given to me is innovative teaching techniques. So how the, let me just first uh, start with the question how innovation can help you become better at teaching. So as we are all different uh, teachers in different different levels, uh, in many different ways, applying innovative teaching strategies to the classroom, it is a tactic, right? And it is a tactic in understanding that our methods can be improved. So that means it accepts the need to grow uh, in ourselves itself and develop and and that is why we are asking our students uh, are you understanding whatever we are teaching and what better way it is required for you to learn more from us so for that purpose we have to start or we have to have some uh, new techniques or you can call it as the innovative techniques or innovative teaching strategies you can say that the innovative teaching strategies start with a growth mindset. That means it should start from us first, right? It should start from our uh, our uh, side, the teacher's side. So we need to identify the room for improvement. We should invest our time in researching and thinking of better strategies to teach or to reach our students. We need to create something new or adapt existing methods. We may have to take risk or we may fail, but we can try again. We iterate and by doing so establish a culture of innovation and creativity in the classroom that will inspire our students to do the same. So these strategies, or we can say that these strategies focus on a student engagement, right? After all, our aim is students should be actively listening or they should be actively engaged in their learning and that they, are, they should not be, or they are less likely to be absent from the class and more likely to succeed at acad academically. So that is our aim. So what are the, uh, so the method what we are actually going to apply here should be a student-centric approach. So as a student, we do we gain more from the class by sitting passively? Uh, for a uh, one hour lecture or 45 minutes lecture or are we going to learn by actively participating or doing something in the class by asking questions maybe or collaborating on projects or doing some problems so let us see the different innovative uh, techniques or innovative teaching strategies that the teachers use in their classroom to improve student engagement and academic outcomes so I have listed out here around 14 different innovative methods. Most of the techniques you may be familiar with, but still I'll just go through it. Interactive lessons we can introduce using, you can use virtual reality technology. We can use artificial intelligence in education, blended learning, 3D print. You may use the, use the design thinking process, or you may use the project-based learning or inquiry-based learning, cooperative learning, flipped classroom, peer teaching, peer feedback, crossover teaching, personalized teaching. So these are some of the different different methods we may uh, apply to uh, reach out to each and every student. So first one, let me just start with the interactive lessons. So one way lessons are very traditional, and that means you are always saying something. It is like uh, broadcasting in the radio right so those are very very traditional you are asking them to write something you are dictating and uh, they may be doing something else 
so it is actually or you may say that it is exhausting for you sometimes and even for the students so what we need to do is you need to create an environment where students feel encouraged to speak up and express their ideas so uh, and uh, time to time review the techniques which were you are using and uh, anyway the goal of teaching is to promote learning right so the strategies that we are deploying or applying uh, should be to promote learning and uh, we can it's not just one method whatever i have mentioned over here you can even try with different strategies uh, or you can even mix up the strategies and try whichever uh, allows you to get more attention from the students or make the students engage in the topic whatever you are teaching over there so it is an iterative process which helps us promote learning more effectively and successfully you may use virtual classrooms right so virtual classroom means what that uh, technology so the virtual reality so students can immerse themselves in the different spaces and interact with real objects instead of seeing things on flat screens so whoever is supposed the people they are teaching in mechanical field or the uh, the teachers they teach in uh, the medical right so we are actually saying okay suppose uh, I need to uh, observe what is actually happening inside the uh, body, right? So that means anatomy somebody is teaching. So what they, what do they, what do they do? MBBS people so immediately are they going to uh, cut open the body and show what is there inside? Every time it may not work. Every time they may not be getting a body. For first year only one time the students may go and see these things, right? So if now, if you are using the virtual reality techniques, virtual uh, augmented reality, or those technology, which can be a little costly, but it can turn any of your lessons into a uh, surprising thing, and the students will enjoy it. That is what I feel. And using AI in education, AI, artificial intelligence, it assists us in doing so much of our work. So who says we cannot use it in education? Many of the uh, debates are going on right now, the chat GPT, AI, and all these uh, technologies, they are going to replace teachers. No, it is actually no. Uh, the uh, teachers, they can, they can help in education because the, it will actually re reduce the workload of teachers. That means uh, sitting and writing the notes and preparing, but they can prepare using the slides. They can get the no uh, uh, so much of volumes of uh, data from internet they can digitize it, right? So such things if they are doing, and it will be kept for a long, long time. So personalizing the courses, and you can instruct the students more efficiently and effectively. So we will be, probably we are already using uh, many different things like uh, the learners, learning management system, plagiarism detection, automatic scoring and assessment. All these are AI products. Along with that, if you are using uh, some new learning methods what is the problem in that there is nothing to lose right and but the students definitely they will be engaging in the class they'll be engaged in the class and they will be like active learning they'll do many of the innovative learning strategies uh, what we are actually going to discuss are active learning strategies so this particular methods encourage students to discuss right or to contribute not just to discuss or not just sitting silent it is they will be uh, contributing to to our workload also and they are actively participating they are investigating and they will create so active learning challenges the students by uh, if you are uh, questioning them or if they are asking if you are asking them to um, do some problems and uh, do the critical thinking for all these purposes we can use the artificial intelligence methods and um, the, these are some of the tools the teachers can use, the course management tools, assessment tools, adaptive learning, parent-teacher communication. Obviously, we can use the artificial intelligence tools. And other than that, audiovisual aids also you can uh, use as part of uh, this uh, uh, innovative teaching methods. Then comes the blended learning. So the blended learning meaning itself. It is, uh, you can say that it is also known as techn technology mediated instruction 
or it is known as web enhanced instruction or mixed mode instruction this is an approach to education which combines which mix right physical uh, and online learning experiences that means the online education materials and the opportunities for interaction uh, it is uh, combined with the physical place based classroom methods so here uh, the this will give the students more control over the time place path and pace of instruction okay so we can say that this particular technology is a key component of blended learning as it is for students in the real world so uh, this is uh, using the blended learning method it is more flexible compared to the traditional method so it is more uh, it gives more flexibility to create effective studying environments and customized learning experiences and again it is very hard to uh, neglect we should not be neglecting the powerful tools whichever is available the internet uh, whatever you are getting from the internet or e learning software and already there are many different things which is going on like video meetings we all were introduced into such online uh, mediums during the covid the pandemic period so we were supposed to we were compelled to take classes by online right but now i think it has become it, it has become very common uh, and even for remedial classes we don't have to go to the colleges or we don't have to go to any schools anymore instead of that sitting at home making a video call as we are doing it now the teach, uh, the video meetings for teachers and students it is possible and even the learning management system to manage courses online sites to interact and play and many different applications apps which serve studying purposes it has taken over the world now and uh, the flexibility of this particular blended learning enables students to have more control over their learning methods perhaps they can watch uh, they will watch online lectures at home and engage in peer groups for collaborative activities or maybe they will prefer to join lecture based virtual classes and do their homework independently so that is the beauty of blended learning uh, coming to the next point the innovative teaching method which is known as the 3d printing okay in the case of this these are just uh, i just wanted to show you see the 3d printing for a heart or the molecular structure or for the wheel or the anchor or a pillar this is history lesson or for a windmill if this is it is shown it is given it is there around uh, the 3d printing it is there for almost around 30 years but uh, many of the people they are not using it in the in the in the education okay if they want um, mechanical people if you go and see that to teach some of the things uh, they are using it the 3d printing right and i have seen in many many of the places uh, uh, to teach the anatomy or the chemistry uh, definitely the chemistry students can uh, take the print out of their molecules to study so uh, auto automobile engineering so for them for them what uh, they can do is instead of bringing the car and uh, um, uh, making it uh, not working instead of that they can take the print of the print replacement of the tires or any any parts of the car or any parts of the automobile uh, uh, vehicles uh, take it in 3d printers and then bring it in the classroom and then teach so it the 3d printing it has got attention of educators educators who are looking into ways to incorporate into the classroom so graphic design students could create 3d versions of their work so 3d printing it gives the students real world understanding and ignites their imagination so studying it is much much easier when students can hold organ models in their hands to learn about the human body or see models of famous buildings and explore their structures so that is about 3d printing and the next point it is project based learning so this is one of the method already uh, it is being implemented in many of the now institutions i should say uh, it's like um, iits and uh, foreign universities already they are more than learning just theory uh, it is based on project so all students they do work on projects at the end of a course or program nowadays i think it is from the 
uh, third year in engineering, they will be doing mini projects and such things. And some of the students who are more interested, they used to come from the second year itself and they want to do a mini project and they want to learn. So project based learning, it is uh, mostly it uh, you can say that it revolves around projects. So it is an effective method that helps students drive their own learning journey. So that means in a uh, project based learning exercise, students identify real world problem, uh, then develop a solution. So if I'm asking some students to first identify the problem, which is uh, given to you or which is uh, explained by any other person, I will usually will tell you, okay, you just go to an industry person and find out the existing problems or in your real life itself, if you are finding some problem, make it into or just change it into a project, right? So project-based uh, learning relies on developing key skill set, uh, set such as uh, like research or even critical thinking, problem solving and collaboration. That is one of the uh, best method you can learn uh, whenever you are having, you are having a collaboration with maybe we can say that interdisciplinary, interbranch or uh, with the industry or with uh, some other educational institution. Uh, such things they can do when if, they, if we are implementing the project-based learning. So project-based learning is an active method of learning where students gain mastery through uh, the application of their knowledge rather than uh, just memorizing the thing or just by uh, by hearting the things in the theory. So it is like uh, no, it will allow the students to solve real world issues definitely. So and come up with new solutions over a more extended period. And project, uh, these are some of the project based learning examples, which you can call as part of innovative teaching methods, film and documentary. Any particular issue we uh, the society is facing. So they are doing so the students will be really happy to do it. I'm telling you, that we are giving it as an assignment. Uh, in, instead of sitting and just copying it from the going to the library and copying it from the traditional textbook and bringing it to you, if we are asking you the students to do a documentary on a specific issue the society is facing, uh, immediately they will do it. And then other uh, way of innovating teaching method is you can plan and organize an activity. Uh, for example, this month, the June 5th was our environmental day. So if uh, it is not just mean it is for the, the engineering people, planning and organizing an activity such as uh, planting a tree, deforestation, afforestation, right? Uh, to reduce deforestation and increase afforestation. That means more introducing more plants into the society, more in, into our places where we are lacking now, right? So such activity, if I'm asking, even the student who sits dull in the classroom, definitely they will be getting up and saying that I will do it. So these are some of the activities. These are part of our innovative teaching method. And create and manage a social media account for a specific purpose. Everyone, anyone and every one of us are having social media accounts. And for what purpose we are using it? For the study purpose, if you are using it, it is really good. And next one, artfully illustrate and analyze the cause effect solution of a social problem. For example, that is overpopulation and the housing shortage in big cities. If you explain to explain this, they will find the solution. So this is a project, right? There is overpopulation and how to adjust with the housing sh uh, shortages in the big cities. So if this problem is given to the students, they will come up with a lot of solutions. And another project-based learning example or method is help local fashion brands to go carbon neutral. So most of the time, the local, uh, the, the fashion, if they are changing it, right, whether they are uh, doing it carbon neutral, whether or carbon is released. So even you can even do research on this particular area. Next one is the use the design thinking process. OK. Uh, the design thinking process, this is actually, you can say that it is a solution uh, based strategies to solve problems or even collaborate and spark students' creativity. So uh, under this uh, 
the design thinking process, right? Under this, we have uh, five different stages. Uh, and uh, these different stages are this particular uh, point or this particular method is different from all the other method which I have told here. So the design thinking process, it involves the first step is empathize. The first stage is empathize. That means empathize with the students. Develop empathy and find out the needs for the solutions. Right? And second, the step is define. Define the issues and the potential of uh, addressing these particular issues. Then the third stage is ideate. Think and generate new creative ideas. Then make a model. That means prototype. Make a draft or sample of the solutions to explore the ideas further. And finally, after making the model, you need to test it. Test the solutions, evaluate, and gather feedback. So this is just a drawing I just wanted to show. This is design thinking for schools. Empathize, define, ideate, prototype, test it. After testing it again, you can you may repeat it. You may change the prototype, or you may uh, have you can have more number of more ideas, and accordingly you can change your plans. It is almost like putting a jigsaw together, right? Then I have not mentioned or I have not written here jigsaws. Jigsaws are another active uh, learning method. Most importantly, the jigsaw uh, th that was introduced to uh, as um, for the, as an opportunity for the students to uh, teach other students. So while we take that is what while we teach we learn. So explaining something to someone is uh, that was considered as the best way to truly understand it. That is why once we, the, even if the subject which is given to us for the teachers to teach for the first time, you will find it difficult. But when you are learning, when you are learning also, you will, will try to, and uh, you will write may, uh, maybe, or you will read, right? Or you will try to find the examples. Then actually, when when I, when you are actually learning the, the moment when you go and teach that subject for the first time, and you are you are actually learning along with your students, so then you will come to know what are the the needs of it as a student, what it is, what exactly it is needed. So the same way with jigsaws, uh, students are divided into groups and given given different pieces of information. So students in each group are then asked with the learning. Uh, the information enough to be able to explain it to someone else. So, so that is why most of us are using uh, some chapters or some modules whenever we feel like teaching. You may divide the topics or divide the modules into different different topics and give to different students. And you are expecting the students to uh, re get it back to you or uh, present in front of everybody in that particular order because you know, as a teacher, you know, if this order, if they do, then only it will work out, right? So uh, this is uh, this is the uh, next version, empathize. I mean, the, uh, the five different points again, empathize, define, ideate, and prototype it, that means more make a model of it, test it, and repeat if necessary. So design thinking refers to the set of cognitive, strategic, and practical procedures used by designers in the process of designing, and to the body of knowledge that has been developed about how people reason while engaging with the design problems. Next method is inquiry-based learning. This is one of the most important method and this is, I think, this is the uh, best method uh, out of innovative teaching. So we should be in a position to, um, it's, it's an active learning. That is the first thing. So the, it, it, is, it starts by pos posing questions, problems, or scenarios. So it, it definitely contradicts with the, the traditional education, where usually the teacher will go to the class and present the fact or write uh, on the board and then wait for, uh, then clear the doubt. Instead of that, uh, you may ask the students, OK, you just read uh, two pages and come. And then tomorrow when he comes, you can start uh, saying that. Whatever, you, what did you understand? 
then you will be getting n number of answers. So here, what will I learn? What will I create? What will I solve? How can I make an impact? What do I love, love to do? So here, one just one point is enough for you to say. Rest of the points the students will say. So that means you have to make the students to uh, do the inquiry on the subjects whichever they want to learn. So inquiry-based learning develops thinking and problem-solving skills. And instead of trying the class through the, the regular, the traditional lecture style format, the teacher can pose one or two questions that is sufficient or just, uh, just uh, um, explain some particular scenarios and problems. Students then what they do is they will research these topics individually or in groups to formulate their answers. And suppose if the teacher do a mistake, immediately they'll be able to point out that, OK, uh, madam, this is a mistake. That is a mistake you have done. See. So there are this, the, there are scenarios I have purposefully done the mistake on the board so that they should identify it. They should start questioning, oh, my madam doesn't know, right? But those comments will come, doesn't matter, but they are actually listening to whatever you are teaching. So. Now, if you do that, students, students, if they research the topics individually or in groups to formulate their ideas or answers, then they can present it or they can present their findings and support uh, with the supporting evidence to the class along with other students. So students are then able to further develop their answers by listening to what other students are actually saying or what they have found as well as identifying uh, any new areas which require more um, detail or more attention. So inquiry-based learning is also kind of, you can say, it's uh, an, uh, not just also kind of, it is an active learning. So instead of giving lecture, uh, this is we need to do. So include problem-based learning and doesn't rely much on the teacher. So instead, uh, here what happens is the teacher is uh, almost like a facilitator in the, uh, rather than a lecturer. So it in a way, it is making the teacher's life is also easier when you are applying this particular innovative teaching method. So here uh, you are having next method is cooperative learning. Cooperative learning means uh, it can be uh, a combination or uh, it, it is mixed of positive interdependence, individual accountability, group processing, promote promotive interaction, interpersonal and social skills. So when we do the cooperative learning, what happens is if any students, they are having a problem with interpersonal or social skills, when they work together or when they trust each other and resolve the conflicts constructively to achieve a common goal. And individually, they are accountable. Even if they do as a group also, but individually, they are, they are the accountability is there. So they will do their best work uh, to uh, to get the name right. That uh, as a as an individual, they have done their part properly. So they will share ideas. Then they will help the group function efficiently. And this is another way to promote the interaction between the students. So they assist and interact with each other to solve problems. And uh, then group processing. So by reflecting on the learning process and effectiveness of contribution of the members in group improves. That definitely it will improve. And more than that, or the the best, the main point I, which I have to mention is positive interdependence is there. So students work as cohesive groups to achieve shared learning objectives. So that is one of the beauty of this cooperative learning. So it is an educational, we can say that it is an educational approach which aims to organize classroom activities into academic as well as social learning experiences. And this is, um, you may say that there is much more to cooperative learning than merely arranging students into groups. So uh, here in this case, actually, we don't have to arrange them into groups. Because they, most of the times, if you see, they themselves uh, form the group or find the group. And it has, uh, they are, we can call it as structuring positive interdependence. And this is another method or um, uh, the flipping of the classroom or flip the classroom. Flip the process a little bit for a more exciting and effective learning experience. So here, what they have to do, as I have told before in the inquiry-based learning, 
before the class students need to watch videos read materials or research to have some basic understanding and knowledge this i have seen in most of the uh, um, abroad countries developed countries what they do is the people will, will be coming to the class and they will just start directly will start with the uh, presentations okay and for the new beginner uh, who has uh, uh, they will not be having much idea but in the previous class what it might have told they will be asking okay page first uh, 60 pages you re read and come right and what did you understand so this is like uh, if you uh, have uh, if you read about the different universities outside cambridge oxford university such universities the classrooms are for they have the choice of taking whatever actually they want to study it is not just okay medical means only medical or commerce means only commerce no it's not like that they have elective they they have their own choices to study they may study languages so flipped in a flipped to classroom students review lecture material at home that is the first thing they do okay and um, work on projects and assignments in the classroom so whatever they have watched at home or whatever they have just gone through uh, and as as a reading material at home right they will be doing the research and uh, they will have some basic understanding and knowledge but when the when they come to class the class time is devoted to going uh, doing the actual homework okay the reverse of what we are doing over here so the homework will be done collectively right uh in instead of doing the homework at home so here the collective homework is done as in group discussions or debates or any other student uh, leading activities so the flip to class so this is about that means the flipped means it is like this uh, the switch is flipped right the on and off position is changed here so mainly what you need to remember is we will ask them to read something from home and come back and do the activities in classroom itself so students in the flipped classroom complete a coursework uh, better than uh, what you are asking them to do uh, at home as a homework so the flipped classroom provides a great space for peer-to-peer -peer collaboration so that is there the student uh, can discuss with each other and do it so students engage um, one another to complete uh, group projects, debates, and practice. So teachers are not the center of the flipped classroom. So that is one of the point. So this particular strategy uh, centers around students and can help teachers better plan personalized learning and evaluate students' performance. So the teachers, the teachers can be more flexible. They can address any personalized help if it is needed and you can they can the teachers can give directions for students and even for any student groups as they complete their uh, work whatever it is given then the next method uh, which uh, which is a part of peer teaching and feedback so students can take the lead in this particular activity by choosing their area of interest so in a subject, suppose uh, you wanted to take the operating system subject. So students may be interested in solving some of the problems or arithmetic problems, or they wanted to do, uh, they want to explain about the, uh, the seven wonders of the world, right? So if, and other people may not be, the other students may not be interested in learning that much history. But if you are going for the peer teaching and feedback system, Providing and receiving constructive feedback with an open mind and appropriate manners are essential skills where students need to learn. That it is required in the in in the life also, right? So, <clears throat> peer teaching is one of the very important um, aspect they need to learn. So, already we have mentioned about the uh, uh, when I have was discussing about the jigsaw. So students, uh, they will exhibit mastery when they explain or teach others, right? So if in, in this peer teaching, if um, we are asking or we, we will be having the students choose an area of interest within the scope of the subject which is being taught. So we can provide them with the opportunity to 
independently research the topic and pre create a presentation on, on it. Nowadays, people will be saying that a seminar, right? So this seminar will be introduced in the in only in the seventh semester or in the sixth semester. That is what uh, usually in engineering we do. So instead of that, every day, if right, if the people will be ready to present something, so. I'm not asking every day they should do it, but in between or sometimes they, if they some of the days if they do it, it will be good for the student to uh, a, again improve their interpersonal skills or in, improve their presentation skills. So you may set aside class time for students to present to the class to teach their peers about the topic. So with peer teaching, students learn skills such as um, what do you call the independent study, presentation skills, and obviously they will improve their confidence. So interactive polling tools, it is actually required. So that is like uh, live word cloud features, which will make easy to do a quick peer feedback session. So after each and every classes, you can ask the students to get the feedback about their teaching. So uh, after do, uh, we do that, we can um, uh, ask the students to explain the comments about the, uh, how or the others were responding uh, on the classes or on the presentation they have done for their peers. So that will help in um, improving the, uh, the teaching methods, what they have exp uh, experienced. And the same method will uh, help the teachers also uh, if uh, we are asking for the feedback. And then the next method, which uh, is part of our uh, innovative teaching, is crossover teaching. Crossover teaching, it combines the experience of learning in both the classroom and a place outside. So that will allow us to explore concepts in school or college together, then arrange a visit to a particular place where you can demonstrate how that concepts work in a real setting. So this is needed. All Already we are doing as um, the part of we may say we are having the internships or industrial visits industrial visit along with the teachers to some different places so if we go to such places only we will be learning uh, where you or you may be able to express or you may be able to explain or you may be able to demonstrate how that particular concept work in the real setting so we, for example, we may be saying supercomputer, supercomputer, or weather forecasting, such things we are saying, but uh, we are not able to show it in the actual environment. If that is a, a situation, we may have to take these students. So that is an additional responsibility, this crossover teaching. So if the teachers are ready to do that, right? So that is one of the best method of innovative teaching, I should say. And even this also, uh, we need to take the feedback. Feedback is very important, incredibly important. Students need to learn how to offer constructive feedback as well as accept feedback. So that is as part of the prior teaching. The, suppose the students have already done the teaching for their peers, their friends, right? So then they should be in a position to accept whatever feedback is given by their friends. So if the feedback is, um, if, it, uh, if they are getting the feedback from their own student, uh, their own uh, peer, I mean, their own friends, they might not feel so bad about the, about the criticism which is coming. But if we are asking them to do a seminar and we only are giving the feedback, then uh, the students might say, okay, however, how much ever I do, the, the teacher doesn't appreciate me or if she is finding or he is finding fault in me. So such um, comments or such uh, problems can be avoided if you are asking the students to take class for their peers and to get the uh, feedback, constructive uh, criticism by their own students. So they should learn how to offer constructive feedback, one thing. They should uh, learn how to accept even if it is destructive feedback. Because such things are, again, it comes in life when they grow, when they go and start working in some different places. So you can uh, do, what you can do is you, that we can provide the students with a mechanism 
for providing a feedback even that feedback system also we can ask the students some of the students to develop as part of a project based learning right so that is a need that is a uh, uh, that's an issue or which requires solution so we you can ask the students to develop such a product or such a project where the students themselves will be finding the parameters and which are all the different parameters to be put in the uh, feedback form all right so feedback tools like uh, polling or even emojis are these are a great way for quick feedback cycles so you can even challenge or ask students to expand their uh, uh, their own feedback and then ask other students with opposing opposing opinions to discuss why they think differently okay and crossover teaching again it is part of the you can even say that active learning so um, this active learning which includes the different techniques to discuss contribute or participate or in investigate or even create so active learning challenges students by questioning them requiring problem solving and critical thinking and uh, most importantly the active learning engages students and requires them to be very active in the classroom and this is uh, one of the again very important innovative teaching method that is personalized learning so here the main thing at, as a teacher we should remember is each and every student is unique and different the needs of them are also different so while uh, one strategy works for one student it may not work for uh, or it may not be effective for another group of students so group activities are great for extroverted ones but what will happen to the introvert students that also we may have to think so this particular method the personalized learning method tailors the learning process of every student so although taking more time to plan and prepare uh, it we will be helping students learn based on their interest needs strengths and weaknesses to achieve better results so this is one of the complaint or one of the problem almost almost every teacher 98 percentage of the teacher faces nowadays they'll be saying in my class there are students who can get rank there are students who are average there are students who are below average there are students who cannot even perform the basic arithmetic so in this case what are we supposed to do what should we do should we apply what kind of innovative teaching method we should apply right in that case in such cases what we need to do is we may how to mix many different number of innovative teaching methods you need to do the hybrid learning or hybrid teaching or you need to uh, assess each and every student it which may take a long time but that is why i used to tell okay for a for a class of four years students the class teacher should not change from first year to uh, final year so that the class teacher will have information about each and every one of their student so that means they will be able to keep a diary about one student right so that means that the, the person the teacher will be able to um, uh, bring out a personalized learning or draft a copy uh, for each and every student each and every student's learning journey can be different but the ultimate goal uh, for our uh, us teachers it will remain the same so to acquire knowledge to give knowledge to acquire knowledge that equips the student for their future life so st this is what so in the in a as an example i just wanted to show see here the student one his arithmetic levels may be good student uh, st this student may listen and do the things right some students they are visual visual learners they have to see something and then only they'll be able to do some students they are uh, by doing only by experience through experience only they will be able to do right so in this uh, diagram what the the uh, the student one one plus two so the arithmetic level is good he wants to have arithmetic level two then she he pair matching method is it is in the fourth level worksheet uh, it is in the fourth level right so but uh, for the in the case of student two once by listening once itself he is able to 
uh, go ahead with arithmetic directly he is in in arithmetic level 3 then there he can do in the uh, matching method or then he can do alone in worksheet level right so this is the second one is adapted learning path for an advanced level student first one was adapted learning path for a beginner level student so you need to identify your student your student is in which group whether he is just a beginner or he is an advanced level so if you have the advanced level students what are you what are you supposed to do with these particular students you can have again you can have the mix mixed or hybrid way of learning teaching and learning so that means it's a student centric approach and you can make the advanced learner or adapted learning student to maybe try for you know, if you are teaching in a university you may be ask you may prepare him or her for getting a university rank but if you are finding the student is just a beginner your aim should be changed right your aim should be just to make the student pass this particular exam university exam then suppose you have a student who is just above average maybe getting a 50 percentage marks in every subject or his behavior his personal skills or um communication skills are okay if it is not that much good but it is okay in then what is your role what is your goal your goal to make him improve his skills personal skills and uh, study skills and make him to reach up to 70 percentage right not uh, just to pass the exam not uh, get um, uh, you are not trying to make him get university rank but in between something so like that you may have to identify recognize each and every student's capacity and level of understanding so that you can help the students to develop their skills and work towards future so what exactly is innovative teaching so innovative teaching is the process of we can say it is the process of proactively in introducing new teaching strategies and methods into classroom it is nobody told it is it should be all the old methods should be um, revamped or it should be removed and you should uh, do only the digital methods no nothing like that so it is like you are um, bringing up some new strategies and it can be applied in the classroom itself so usually people will be asking the what is the purpose of introducing these new teaching strategies so the main purpose of introducing these new teaching strategies and methods it is to improve academic outcomes one way if you think and another one is to address the real problems to promote equitable learning and many of the time i have seen uh, the students especially successful students they uh, rely too heavily on textbook answers so they may develop an over time um, what do you call the tendency to think there are only right and wrong answers but most of the questions they don't have right or wrong answers right in uh, today's world students need to exercise uh, conversational skills and empathy they need to learn about ethics students need to learn about learn to communicate and collaborate uh, they need to learn to ask open-ended questions and the teachers have to encourage uh, the vibrant nature of the students in class conversations students can piece together different information learned or experience in their life to stitch together most more cohesive points so those such, a, such things can encourage students to not only find their voice but express them as well. So those are some of the things other than the regular teaching and learning we should, in, uh, we should inculcate in our students' life. So um, we, uh, we have seen many different innovative teaching methods. So we, uh, we may review these uh, innovative teaching strategies and we may have to consider how we can use them in our classroom to Im improve the student engagement. And uh, this will actually drive to uh, innovate in the classroom should always consider how such innovations can improve student outcome. So the again, we may have to remember the goal of teaching is to promote learning. So whatever strategies we deploy are to promote learning 
so one again uh, trying out different strategies or mix strategies or hybrid method that will help us in improving our uh, methods and to improve and whatever only uh, one thing we need to think about is the feedback the whatever feedback the students are giving to us we need to take it in a positive way right uh, and now as a summary the education field it is changing so fast that we need to keep up and adapt to the more modern strategies otherwise it may be hard for us to fit in so what is the future? The main question comes here is, what is the future of innovative teaching? So for I should say that from the time the, the pandemic started, right? So there is a shift over uh, for the last couple of years. Uh, the students, the students are changing their ways to digital students, right? So digital students are accelerated uh, in learning more things. So Many of the 60% of um, the students uh, in abroad countries, they are using digital learning tools. So here I should say the future of innovative uh, teaching could be virtual academy. So right now we are, I am taking a webinar or uh, uh, as a resource person in IoT for IoT Academy, I am teaching, I mean, discussing the things virtually, right? So virtual academy enrollment numbers have seen a very steady growth. Uh, even it was before the pandemic, because I have seen so many different uh, platforms like Udemy, uh, Khan Studies, Coursera, such courses, such people were, were there even before the pandemic uh, era started. So at that time itself, people were teaching in digital, uh, using the digital tools. They were teaching in uh, virtually. And there were hundreds or thousands of students each year in abroad companies uh, or abroad places. They wanted to uh, happily uh, do the digital or virtual academy and get degree. If that is the case, then another question comes. Um, these virtual degrees are allowed or is there any degree? These degrees are good enough for that anyway we need to give this solution I mean, this things to the uh, universities whoever gives the degree so as a summary let me just complete and let me just say the whatever strategies the innovative teaching strategies whatever we have used uh, to inspire creativity and success in the classroom change is actually necessary and through change we are bound to fail or miss a bit but however, failing is OK. One of the most important lessons we teach our students is that they need to try. And if they fail, then that's OK. So failing is OK as long as we take lessons from there and then try again. So even these strategies seem like we are taking a big leap into something new, right? All these different innovative teaching strategies, even if you comb combine and mix it and uh, use it as uh, what do you call the hybrid innovating innovative teaching methods we don't have to apply uh, all these techniques right away into our teaching strategy but you can think think of how you can use one or the other for a specific lesson so maybe some subjects lend themselves to a project based learning exercise while others benefit from simply asking questions or sim uh, some other uh, subjects that will be um, the theory subject that could be good enough uh, if you are asking them to do the peer uh, teaching. So only thing what we need to do is keep your ears and eyes open. Many teachers are going through this journey already, right? So there are some uh, many different uh, examples or stories. If you uh, browse internet, you may be seeing, okay, how you can use the source material for your classroom experiments. I think many of the students, many of the teachers are already doing it. I have seen many of the teachers are browsing for, um, let me say, the data mining problems. And many of the people, uh, they have started uh, many different new innovative methods, especially during this pandemic. And they have posted in internet, they have posted in YouTube videos, and, and actually they are making additional money also doing this. So trying out um, different technologies like recording video lectures or using virtual classrooms when appropriate 
uh, that is you can call it as a digital experience maybe even you can have your students create their own videos to teach and inform other students our students are already creating videos with their friends so maybe we can leverage their excitement and put it into good academic use so as long as we are innovating we are growing so that is the thing we need to remember so you can just give it a go and it is always in, always an exciting um, time to be in the classroom so it is especially exciting now while many are looking to introduce these innovative different methods so let us uh, hope for the future the future innovative teaching methods could be let us hope to see each other through the the virtual academy digital tools so i think i have uh, uh, put almost all the points together. So if anybody has any doubt, you may ask me now.